Welcome to the Drama Free Living Podcast with your host, Dennis and Lisa McEntee. And Lisa, we've been going through last episode, we talked about this idea of character and really the, the two legs of building confidence with yourself and with your teams. And so last week we talked about character and this week we want to cover uh, capabilities. And I, I kind of maybe like this analogy, it's sort of the, uh, the head of leadership and the heart of leadership, right? You, you have a heart part to leadership and then you also have a head part. Right. And I think the heart part is that character and we'll cover more about character in, in another episode, but we also want to cover some of the head things of a leadership because they they grow equally. I love the quote by uh, Stephen Covey. You can look at any leadership failure and it's always a failure of either character or competence. Yeah, and we want to encourage you. We, we read through Speed of Trust again and we got some of these sort of quick thoughts from there. So if you want more information, maybe some other ideas, we're just going to take give our take on it. But if you want some more ideas, that's a great resource, Speed of Trust. It's probably a book that's, I don't know, 15 years old. It's been around for a while. Uh, and so we want to cover capabilities today. And what are are some of the capabilities that make me credible? And I think that's a great question. That's a to, great statement. Yeah. What are some of the capabilities? And, and capabilities are different for everybody. People have different capabilities. Be, people would not have confidence in me doing open heart surgery on them. I, I just don't have those capabilities. And so we want to think through like, what are some of these things? So Lisa, maybe you started off and we had an idea about running with your strengths. Running with your strengths. So... There's all kinds of different temperaments, personality assessments, mm -hmm. skill assessments that you can take online, and you can figure out what your strengths are. Okay. And that's very, very valuable yeah. to know what it is that you're actually good at, both in your character and in your competence, in your skill sets. Yep. But then it's also... There's an aspect of it that we don't typically talk about, and that's practicing accountability hmm. in running with your strengths. And so what do you mean by that, practicing accountability? Because I, it to me, they don't seem to go together. So practicing accountability is holding yourself accountable first okay. and others hmm. second. So there's wow. something that I need to do, and it is in an area of my strengths. Right. There's also – the areas of the weakness. Mm -hmm. And if there is a, res a responsibility that I need to take care of, I need to have accountability to myself. I need to have accountability to myself first and to others second. And I need to take responsibility for those things. If that's an area of my strength, then I should be the one to do it. I, think, I shouldn't delegate it to someone else. Yeah, I, I think that's a key thing is be very careful about delegating your strengths. I mean, there's certain things on, on our team that with the team that we have and where we're at at this stage in the growth of our organization, I remember I sat with you and I said, I'm going to just take this. This is not forever, but over the next just really couple weeks is I just need to just take this because – I'm really the best at it on the team. When we look at the whole team, it's one of my strengths. And that's how it is with any team. Yeah. At any team during the process of growth, you are going to have to do something that maybe isn't your ideal sandbox. Right. It's not your ideal strengths, but you still go – you try to get to the point where you can run with your strengths and you can give those things off to someone else. But in the meantime – Take responsibility. Take responsibility for those things. Be Also, be clear on how you'll communicate how you're doing and how others are doing. So you could have okay. a strength. You could have something that you're doing well or something that someone else does well. Also, strengths that are maybe not your sweet spot, but yeah. you're the one that has to do it at this time. So having a system, being clear on how you're going to communicate with other people about those things, on how you're doing with those, and also yeah. how other people are doing. And it's just, it makes it, that's part of accountability. And then also not blaming, because inevitably mm -hmm. something's not going to go the way we think it, we wanted it to, or the way someone else was expecting it to. And practicing accountability, running with your strengths is not blaming other people. Yeah, it's really good. And I know that's one thing that we always are asking our team is, you know, what, what do you feel like are your strengths? And it's this whole idea of what gives you energy, what drains your energy. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting survey. They said that eight out of 10 employees surveyed feel somewhat miscast in their role. Right. And then there's not energy for it, so they're not motivated. And I, I believe in this whole idea of creating self-motivated teams, self-directed, self self-motivated teams. And typically when I'm working in my area of strengths, you don't have to motivate me. Right. A, a little bit, Lisa, part of doing the podcast for us is working in our strengths. And people don't have to motivate us, go, come on, you got it. 
we, I mean, it's work and we do have to schedule it, but there is a little bit of this, we're just self-motivated to do it because it's in an area of our strength. And it's something, not only is it an area of our strength, but it's an area that produces energy for us and doesn't drain energy, even though it's a lot of work yeah. and there is a lot of time, research, and energy involved, it still is more energizing than it is more draining. It, and I think as leaders, we want to continue to grow in that energy and also continue to give your team opportunities to grow in that energy. We, we've we've had these conversations with team members is that, well, this is the role and we know this part, you know, energizes you, this 80%, this 20% drains you. Listen, you're still going to have to figure out how to do the 20%, mm -hmm. but what would it look like maybe two or three years from now as we continue to grow and you stay with us and you develop, uh, we could delegate some of that 20% in keeping a growing organization. That's how you keep a growing organization. I think also an aspect of running with your strengths that's very important to bring out is you could have an area of strength, mm -hmm. but it could also be something that after a while would drain your energy. And so rather than misunderstanding, okay, this is actually something I'm really good at. I am naturally, so for me personally, I am naturally detail oriented. Yeah. And I do pretty well. I don't mind spreadsheets. I don't mind details and information. You're awesome at it. But you think I'm awesome at it, and I actually don't mind it. And I am pretty good. I can look at something and I can spot the errors. Yep. But if I have to do that for multiple hours and yeah. multiple days, I'm just absolutely exhausted. So is that truly my strength? It's a great it's, question. It, it would be an aspect of my strength, but that doesn't mean just because I'm good at it that that's what I should be running with and spending my time predominantly doing evaluating the amount of energy drain or the amount of energy lift that I receive during an activity, that truly determines your area of strengths well, and what you can run with for long term perfect. without having a big drain. Yeah, it's part of why we created the J2 activity assessment for, for our roundtable participants mm -hmm. is every quarter when they come to a roundtable, they look at all of the activities and everything they're involved in and answer the question, how much joy does this produce and how much junk, how much yeah. does this feel junky? And it says joyful, junky, sort of sort of idea and because we want joy to continue to expand. I'm right. I'm joyful and I'm expanding my joyfulness. Mm -hmm. And I think a key with that is really running with your strengths because your strengths are where your greatest contributions flow. Absolutely. And so if I am working on a spreadsheet and detail oriented yeah. items, in the beginning it's joyful. I kind of enjoy it. It it intrigues me, it interests me, but the longer I do it for the longer span mm -hmm. of time I do it, then it becomes junky and it begins to drain me and being able to evaluate, okay, I can do these these spreadsheets and these detail things yeah. for about two hours. And then, okay, after that, I'm I'm starting to have the energy drain and I no longer have the energy for other things that are maybe just as important. Well, and I think it goes back to the best knowledge is self-knowledge mm -hmm. and really know yourself. And you're the best expert on you in telling yourself the truth and then being able to look out and tell other people the truth too yeah. and, and allow people to, to speak into that. So really running with your strengths, but you got to know them, got to know what they are. And I know we've done multiple podcasts on this, so we'll, we'll keep moving. But the second part about really capabilities, I think, is just keeping yourself relevant. Mm -hmm. Because context continues to change. I mean, our clients continue to change. Technology. They, right. Everything continues. The market continues to change. Culture and, and what's happening with politics and. Yeah. And really kind of being able to look out and seeing where things are going and really almost like understand the context. Not, Forecasting it. Yeah. And it really is a skill. What do you need to do to keep yourself relevant? And so Wayne Gretzky, he had this amazing quote. He said that he never skated to where the puck was, but he always skated to where the puck was going to be. He had that foresight. He, yeah. could, he could picture in advance where things were going and could predict it and head, that, head in that direction. Okay, so almost think about this. So I, I remember Dan Sullivan just a couple of weeks ago saying that he said the future is really just guessing and betting. And he said the key is to get, to get better at your guesses and get better at your bets. It, and it really is true. I, I mean, what is really a daily schedule like? Right? I sit down this morning and I said, okay, this is what I have planned for today. Guess what that is? It's just a guess. 
And maybe by two o'clock today, oh, this happened. I didn't know that was going to happen. Or this person called me this. And all of a sudden, maybe it got turned a little bit. And, and I think continuing to get better at guessing, getting better at guessing makes you a better leader. And it really helps people have confidence in you. Uh, there are things, say, when we bring on new team members that I always spend a, try to spend a lot of time just educating them because, uh, Lisa, we've been in this business for over 20 years and we know some stuff. <laughs> and sometimes team members will bring things and they'll go, hey, we can do this and try it. And I, and I look at it and go, hey, I'm willing to maybe give it a shot, but we tried that 15 years ago. We tried that 10 years ago. I haven't tried that a couple years ago and it never has worked. Right. And at the same time, guessing and betting because – Possibly this time it may work. And yeah. the, the fascinating thing about guessing and betting is it takes off the the self-beating that we would tend to give oh, ourselves. So right. I've got my calendar. I've got it all lined up. Something comes in. It interrupts my calendar. Now I'm having to readjust my entire day. And I go into a complete yeah. story of my day is blown because my calendar is blown. Now I can't get these things done. But instead, if you take the perspective of the future is guessing and betting, well, it just means I guessed incorrectly and I betted too much on it. But maybe next time I can guess, but not bet quite as much. And Absolutely. and in that not betting quite as much, that would be adding additional margin in the future if you put a lower um, cost on your bet. It, it, and it's why with the roundtable and even some of our clients that we work with, we we do quarterly meetings where we set goals mm -hmm. for the quarter and, and even our team, Lisa, we we engage in just setting quarterly goals. And what's fascinating about that is we always have strategic byproducts. We say, we're going to do this. And maybe we didn't do that because something happened and we didn't see it happen. It was it happened six weeks later from when we set our plans, but it was almost a strategic byproduct. It was almost like a different door opened and we decided to walk in that door, but we would have never gotten to that point if we didn't keep moving forward. And if we weren't trying to keep ourselves relevant. Yeah. And so a lot of it is looking out at the market, looking out at your clients. We we look at it, what are our clients' complexities? Well, their complexities change all the time, right? What are some things that they're trying to, you know, fix? And, you know, what are some friction points that they well, their friction points change all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think looking out to your clients and the people that you serve and asking yourself, what are their complexities that we can simplify? And and what what are some of their, you know, opportunities that we can help them take advantage of? Right. And then the next one, so it's it's run with your strengths, keep yourself relevant. And then the next thought that you and I have talked about is really knowing where you're going. And I think that's really the job. The job of leadership is knowing, hey, this is what we're going to do. And this is why we're going to do it. And as leaders, be really open to how. I know the team, our team has a lot of security when I can say, this is what we're doing and this is why it's so important. But then giving them the freedom to say, okay, how do you guys want to do this? And it still gives them agency. They're able to take a large amount of responsibility. But as leaders, I think people follow those who know where they're going. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, people want you to take them somewhere. They, they want you to- And they want it clear. Yeah, and, and I think if it's not clear to you, you can't communicate it clearly to other people. It's why we develop tools like the Intention Clarifier is a great clarity tool that gets everybody on the same page. And what it does is it gets all of the ideas, the concepts out of your brain and onto paper so you can share it with your team, or you could even do it in a team setting. And it could get all of the ideas and concepts and uh, possible outcomes and worst results and best results out of our brains onto paper so we can truly develop the idea and clarify our intentions and know what we want to do and where we're going. Well, and, it, and I think writing these things down really gives you that emotional space. Mm -hmm. And I think it becomes unclear or muddled when we're in the emotion of it. But when I write it down, there's nothing that gives me more clarity than actually seeing it on paper. And then also having my team see it on paper. Be because sometimes what I say is not what people hear. Now, has that not happened in our marriage? Never, right? never. never I, we've never or seen that phenomenon. Team. I've never seen that phenomenon before. It, it, and it works both ways. I mean, I've had team members tell me something and I just go off and that's not even what they meant. Or I know I, I put some things in Slack the other week and 
I had a team member just sort of give a lot, three paragraphs of an answer. And I was, and I thought she did not even understand what I was talking about. And that's the value of, and this is what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. So really like knowing where you're going. And I think it's a, it's a super powerful skill because if it's not clear to you, you can't communicate it clearly to other people. And I think that's the goal of leadership, but leaders don't get that if they don't have space. Right. I know that I need space to get away and really think so that when I come back to the team, it's very, very clear. But I don't get that if I'm in the day-to-day -day muck, if I'm, you know, it's like you can't see the forest for the trees. And I think that happens sometimes to leaders. So it's, it's the value of taking time away and just taking time to think. And, and what's the book that we gave out to the roundtable group? Deep Work. Right. How many times do we not do the deep work? We're just busy. busy. Or we don't take the space right. to, to do it. And, it's, and, and I think sometimes leaders that are too tightly scheduled, they're not really able to transform themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're not able to transform their organization and they're not able to transform their teams. So it's that point of white space because white space gives you the ability to transform. So really knowing where you're going. And Lisa, you had one that I thought was really good. Right. So with competency, we're talking about capabilities. And – it's get better. So mm -hmm. when you have that white space and when you go out and have that margin, mm -hmm. you can begin to dream and think and create. And it, and it gives you an idea of where it is that you need to get better. Because huh. sometimes if you're in the middle of the forest and you can't see the trees, right. you don't truly know. But getting better is continuously improving. It's increasing your capabilities. It's always being a learner and don't consider yourself above feedback. Hmm. That's a that's a huge aspect of getting better is being able to get feedback from other people because I I have I only see one perspective. I cannot mm -hmm. see to my side and I can't see to my back. So I have a lot of blind spots and when I receive feedback it's a clear path to me being able to get better. Well, and I like what Tiger Woods said, I'll just interject here real quick. He said I improve therefore I am. And it's this idea of continuous improvement. It's not perfection. Right? My therapist told me the other week, he said, Dennis, it's prog progress, not perfection. And sometimes I get mucked up in perfection and you know, I beat myself up. It's been known to happen. And realizing it's really about progress. Right. And that perfection is really a myth. And I think sometimes with capabilities, people think it's got to be perfect. And, and that's one of the biggest lies because it's about progress. Right. And one of the some of the lies for getting better is that that we're resting on our laurels. Hmm. That's a lie. And then um, well, when it, can I just interrupt real yeah. quick? It's almost like success is the big deterrent of future success. Right. I've reached this level of success, and I think I have it all together. And really, there's more to go. And it's at that point, uh, mm. sports teams, it happens with them all the time. They've reached this level of success. There's a there's an amount of complacency that sets in. And so you don't dig as hard in practice. You don't drive as hard. You don't you don't think as hard and, and study as much because you've come to a level of success and you don't have that that lack of success that's driving you forward, or you don't have that prize that's driving you forward. Or, or I've even seen this maybe with some of our roundtable participants is they get bored. They've built this team where they have a lot of freedom. It, their teams are self-directed. Their teams are self-motivated. It's what they really wanted. And then they go out and go, well, what do I do? What do I do now? My team doesn't even need me. And I think that's the purpose of a challenge. I think leaders always need to have another obstacle, another challenge. Another way that they can get better, a way that they can improve. Yeah, it, it almost like that's the purpose of a problem. The purpose of a problem is really to transform you into a better leader. And so we need problems. We need obstacles. At Ryan Holiday's book, Obstacle is the Way. It's like that obstacle is really the way forward for you. So instead of running away from it, we want to run towards those things. Mm-hmm. So I know for me, it's when I get bored, boy, I make some stupid mistakes. Well, so with getting better, sometimes people think they're getting better because they're learning, they're growing, mm -hmm. but you're not truly getting better if you're not producing. So That's a good. way to fake getting better would okay. be to learn but never produce. Oh, and also to force fit things into what you're good at. So you've got what you're good at, and then you just make it fit. It's kind of like taking I, the long way around in technology. I feel convicted right now. You keep keep moving. Keep moving. So Did you write this for me? Force force fitting things is force fitting yeah. things into what you're good at rather yeah. than learning and improving in that mm -hmm. area and becoming good at something else as well. So don't don't force fit. 
Yeah, there's almost this new energy. I know when I learn something new or get better at something, oh, that gives that spark of energy. And maybe that's where boredom kind of sets in is that people don't have that next spark of energy and and they just haven't seen a bigger future. And that's the importance of feedback, which okay. is our next thing, seeking yep. feedback. The next um, one on capability and building your competence is seeking feedback because, as we said, I can see forward, but I can't see to my side and I can't see behind me. And so I need other people that have got my back that can see all around and can see the 360. And we have a we have a tool, we have a method of start, stop, and continue. Do you want to? Yeah. And I think, Lisa, you said something really important. You said seek feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think as leaders, we need to go out and actually seek it, especially the higher you get, the fewer people tell you the truth. Because sometimes I'm afraid, maybe even with my team, they, they tell me what they think I want to hear. And what I love, just even how we work together is we're pretty good truth tellers. We, we don't always like to hear the truth. But we get better and better at just telling the truth and also going out and seeking feedback. Now, something that typically happens as we're consulting and a lot of our trainers and consultants have really seen this happen is that inevitably different team members with an organization will tell us, hey, I don't get enough feedback. I'm not getting enough feedback. And at least they think they're secretly telling us all about their manager or supervisor. But you know who they're telling us about? I told them about them ourselves, because if I'm not getting the feedback that I need, then it's really my it's my responsibility. So we have a particular process that we use. We have a tool called the feedback generator where we go out with organizations and we ask them three main questions. Hey, what do we need to stop? What do we need to start? What do we need to continue? Another frame on that is, hey, what makes you glad? What makes you mad? What makes you sad? And we ha- go into in-depth on this in yeah. our course coming up called Emotionally Intelligent. Well, you, know what, you know what? You're right. I'm, I'm super excited because we walk through the feedback generator and we really do. give people a practical way. So if that's something, if feedback is something that you need to get better at, then we want to encourage you. It's coming out. It'll be here soon. So just be on the lookout for it. Yeah. Emotionally intelligent, how to be more interactive and less reactive. And, and I think the key sort of skill with this, Lisa, is to not see feedback as an attack. No, feedback is just information. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And it's what differentiates leaders is how they respond to that feedback. Mm-hmm. So feedback is not an attack. It's just information. And that is the power behind a leader is how they're responding to the information that they're receiving from the feedback. Okay, so so let's just think about this for a minute. Okay, if it's not, do le- leaders get defensive sometimes? It's been known to happen. People get defensive. You were we're human. People on this podcast have been known to get defensive, right? It, people with the blue jacket on. Sometimes people with the blue sweater they don't get super defensive, but people with blue jackets sometimes. If you're watching, if you're not watching on YouTube, I'm wearing a blue jacket right now. Um, but I so let's think about this for a minute. Is that if I if I don't see it as an attack. And if I just see it as information, I don't get defensive. How many people we get defensive and we want to justify, rationalize, prove you're wrong, but it's just information. And that that comes back to the point of it is information. That information, not all information is correct. Right. It could be valid. It could not be valid. Exactly. And, And many times feedback is the perception of that person has of your behavior. But it's great to receive, and it can, it, it can be inaccurate, and you have an opportunity to speak to that, but you have to allow people the opportunity to share that and not shut them down. So if you're receiving feedback from one individual, and it's completely different than what individual other individuals are giving you, it's probably just their perception, and it's their lens that they're seeing you through, or your actions, or your project through. But if you begin to hear that same bit of information from multiple areas, um, multiple parts of your life, yeah. there's probably a little bit of truth to it. What is that about um, a car and you know? All right, you find what you focus on. So if you always you buy a new car and then you see that same car everywhere, everywhere. Well, you know that's because it has drawn you in, and you are okay. It's a reality. It's a reality in my life. Well, and I love that fo- feedback gives you an opportunity to focus on something, and if it's a blind spot, by nature you don't see it, 
And that's why we need the feedback because I don't see it, but, oh, I get to focus on it. And then if I get to focus on it, then I can create an improvement plan. It's where feedback becomes super valuable. Right. And, and then the last one I think is super important being just developing our credibility is learning from mistakes. And this goes ties in so well hand in hand with feedback yeah. because – Sometimes we don't even know we made a mistake if we don't get the feedback or we don't even know that there was a better way to do something or that something went wrong without the feedback. Yeah. And Lisa, I've decided I think I want to become an expert at learning from my mistakes. I love that idea. I am all in on that. idea. <laughs> Cause, and, and I have a lot of opportunities, right? And we all do. It, it, and here's the key sort of mindset around that is that really failure is just a myth. It's, it's all about incremental learning. Well, we, we like the term, this is just an experiment. I love it. Yeah, because when scientists, it doesn't become personal. You don't get mad. You don't dog yourself, right? What is it, Thomas Edison? He said, oh, I just found a thousand ways that it didn't work, right? I never failed. I just found a thousand ways that this is not going to work. And I think you, you want to create environments where it's okay to make mistakes. And I think that's one thing as leaders we really have to create is this environment where it's okay to make a mistake. Uh, one thing, Lisa, that we're doing is we're, we're taking a certain amount of time off and we're giving team members responsibility. And I just feel like it's going to be a great experiment. We're, we're going to learn some great things. We just had a roundtable participant t text me this morning and talk about his time off. And I told him, I said, you're going to learn a lot about your team during this time. And a lot about yourself. Yeah. It, 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 and it's stuff that you would never learn if you weren't away. And almost think about life as you're supposed to make mistakes. And it's this idea that it's okay because, Lisa, the mistake I, I made like last week, well, I'm a different person this week. Well, of course I did that. That was all that person knew last week. But now this week, huh, I learned this and this. Of course I would make a different decision. And I think it sort of combats this idea of second guessing. Because a lot of people beat themselves up. Oh, I made a mistake. And they beat themselves up. And no, you just learned something. Right. So what is it? Success is just repeated failures with introspection. <laughs> I love that, right? That's all success is. Right, we, we, we're we going to launch a great course. And the reason it is so great, Lisa, is we've created 10 other courses. And we've made some great mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we've learned, oh, this is what you don't do. Oh, this is how you don't market it. This is how you don't do it. And this course is going to be so amazing because of everything we learned. Now, guess what? Five years from now, it's going to be even more amazing because we're going to take this learning and just bring it into the future. And I think that's the key. People typically don't have a bigger future because they don't know what to do with the past. The past is supposed to inform you. Uh, but if you don't know what the purpose of the past, sometimes people live with regret Right? They have all this regret and all this anxiety about you know, how they didn't do certain things. But if you realize the purpose of my past is just to inform me. Right. So after every experience, after every event, we, we come together as a team and we say, well, okay, what went well? Yeah. What didn't well, go well? And what do we do moving forward? And what do we do moving forward? Because inevitably, even if something goes really well, there are going to be some mistakes or maybe some failures, small or big, and we can find out, okay, what went well? All of these wonderful things went well. This didn't go well. And what are we going to do with that information? It's why we created the mental map, the learning matrix. We've talked about that in previous podcasts. It's a fantastic mental map. And, it, it, and another tool that we have is the trigger identifier. Mm -hmm. And it really covers you. You have this situation where, where you made a mistake, and really use the trigger identifier. Now, listen, if you have not downloaded the trigger identifier, we're going to put it in the show notes. Please go get the trigger identifier. It is one of the best tools I feel like we've ever created to really help people sort of peel the onion on why you did what you did and get the best learning. Now, one thing about the trigger identifier you need to understand is that the first time you do it, it, it might feel a little clunky because your brain is not used to driving down that map. But it will begin to build build connections and build bridges between thoughts such as, okay, what was the situation? Yeah. You know, what was what was I thinking? What was the what was the thought, the uh, lie behind that? What was I feeling? What do I need from other people? And it helps you really see patterns. And when you see patterns, you can really learn. And it, it's what I love about you. You just see patterns so well. And at least let's just tell the truth. It's, and this is really a tool that Lisa really developed and has used for, for years. And she 
made it I just available. didn't tell anybody you about it. You just didn't tell anybody about it. And she's made it available to you. So it's something that she's used and she's a real expert at seeing patterns. And so it's a fantastic tool to really see those patterns. So Elisa, this has been great. Listen, download the trigger identifier. If you haven't gotten it yet, please, it's our free gift to you. No charge. We just want you to have it. Um, and use it. We want you to use it. And don't don't, get, don't give up the first time. Walk it through. And when you another situation arises, um, walk it through again. And eventually, you'll be able to be so skilled in it that you'll be able to, to walk it through in your head. Yeah. I, I think, Lisa, I, I, like, I would just want to talk about our takeaways. Uh, for me, what really hit me is this whole idea of knowing where you're going. And mm -hmm. uh, get, what I've realized is I'm, I don't, I'm not creating enough white space. I'm not creating enough white space to just get away, maybe go sit out by the lake and figure out where we're going and walk through in my head so that when I come back to the team, I can really tell them very clearly, this is what we want and this is why we want it, and then enlist their help. But I think sometimes we move so fast that we don't value that white space. So I'm going to do some deep work, and that was helpful for me. What, what about you? What was the takeaway? I... I think my favorite statement is success is basically it's repeated failures with introspection. We need to put that on our bathroom mirror for me. <laughs> it really is. And, and the key is introspection, right? This failed. What went well? What didn't go well? Take the, take the learning matrix, take that mental model and kind of work through it. Well, and with that is success is repeated failures. Hmm. A lot of times we need to fail more than once. A lot of times we need to fail multiple times. That's repeated failures. But each time we have that introspection of, okay, what do we do moving forward? And continue to learn. I learned something different. Even if I made a very similar mistake. What did I learn this time? What did I learn this time? And really integrating that learning. And that's really how you get better. So Lisa, this has been fun. If you do not have the trigger identifier, we want to encourage you to download it, get it. And to Lisa's point, use it. You'll start to see patterns. And when you see patterns, you're going to have the strategy to really change. So this has been great. We'll see you next time on the Drama Free Living Podcast. <music>